This video was voted for by patrons of Questions for Science. Hello? Hey babe, can you give me a steak from the butcher shop? Um, I'm taking a kidney to a hospital right now. I'm really busy. But I'm hungry. I went to the gym today. Okay, well, I'll do it when I'm done. You literally promised. Babe, this is a matter of life and death. I will do it later, okay? Yeah, but you literally promised that you're gonna have it by a certain time and like I already- Oh my gosh, okay, listen. I'll go to the butcher shop, I'll get the steak, and I'll drop it off in 10 minutes, okay? Okay, thank you. Love you. Bye, babe. Here, babe, they put the steak on ice for you. Okay, thanks, babe. Anytime. Hey doc, sorry I'm late. I'll be at the hospital in five or ten minutes. I just got a little tied up. Yeah, I've got. To... In 2018, there was over 36,000 organ transplants performed in the U.S. However, there's over 100,000 patients on the waiting list, and every day, 18 people die waiting for a new organ. Because organs are in such high demand, and transplantation is a delicate process. Getting the organ from the donor to the recipient in a timely manner is everything. The organ's life begins counting down once blood flow and oxygen stops going to the organ. From here, a list of events take place, each increasing the probability of organ damage. The first event is hypoxia, or the lack of sufficient oxygen in tissue. Cells require oxygen in order to make ATP to make energy, which powers their metabolic processes to stay alive. With no oxygen available, cells must switch from aerobic metabolism to anaerobic metabolism, which makes ATP without using oxygen. Anaerobic metabolism keeps the cells functioning for an extended period of time, but does have a major setback. It makes lactic acid as a byproduct. If there's enough lactic acid in the tissue, it can make it acidic. On the other hand, if the organ were in the body, this wouldn't be a problem. Lactic acid in the body is recycled in the liver into pyruvate by oxidation. No harm, no foul. Also, the individual eventually increases their own oxygen intake, switching back to aerobic metabolism. But, uh, in this case, the organ is outside the body, in a bag, in a box. With no means to recycle the lactic acid or supply oxygen, the tissue becomes dangerously acidic. This is why organs are put on ice when they're transported. The ice puts the organ into a hypothermic state between 4 and 8 degrees Celsius. This cooler temperature makes the cells less active, therefore requiring less ATP, which means less lactic acid. In transport protocols, organs are first flushed with a preservation solution that fills the blood vessels of the organ. This preservation solution contains amino acids and salts to keep the organ stable for a longer period of time. The organ is then placed in a plastic bag containing more solution. This organ bag is then put into a second bag filled with saline solution, and these two bags are placed into a third bag filled with ice and more saline. You might think, well, why not just freeze the organ? That way it'll be preserved even longer. Not exactly. Temperatures below 2 degrees Celsius have been shown to cause frostbite damage in protein denaturation in cells, making the organ useless. The second thing to worry about is osmosis. Since the organ is in a hypothermic state, the cells are less active. As a result, the sodium-potassium pumps in the cell membrane are also less active. This poses a major problem because sodium that's typically pumped out of the cell during normal functioning remains inside for a longer period of time. This higher concentration of sodium draws water into the cell due to osmosis. Osmosis is the movement of fluid from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration. Basically, there's more sodium in here than here, so the water flows into the cell where there's more sodium. This makes the cell hypotonic, causing it to swell. If enough water gets into the cell, it can burst, causing damage to the organ. Finally, even though the organ is in a hypothermic state, it's using less energy and is in a preservative solution, the lack of oxygen will eventually cause organ death. So the best precaution to keeping an organ safe is short transit time between the donor and the recipient. In fact, if you're on vacation, you'd better hope your flight is carrying a donated organ. Flights that are given organs for transport are immediately bumped to priority. Ultimately, the amount of time an organ can last outside the body comes down to which organ is being transplanted. Since organs have different types of tissue and roles in the body, they also have different tolerances to lack of oxygen. The most tolerant organ in low oxygen environments is by far the kidney. 
It's been shown to last up to 36 hours outside the body in ideal conditions. The kidney is able to withstand this abuse because it's largely made up of very small tubes called nephrons that filter out waste from the blood. Interestingly, when there's no blood flowing through the nephron, the concentration gradient around these vessels are largely undisturbed, acting as its own preservative solution. Because these conditions are virtually the same, the kidney can last much longer. Also, historically, the kidney is the most commonly transplanted organ, so it's had the most preservation research done on it. Next, the pancreas has a max life of about 15 hours. Outside the body, the liver is tolerant up to 12 hours. However, because liver cells contain a large supply of glycogen, liver tissue has a high risk of becoming overly acidic from lactic acid production when the organ switches to anaerobic metabolism. For safety reasons, 8 hours is strongly recommended. Finally, the most sensitive organs when outside the body are the heart and lungs. Because they have many intricate vessels that can be damaged in a short period of time, they're very intolerant to low oxygen conditions. Both the heart and lungs can withstand no more than four hours outside the body. Here, Doc. Here's a kidney. Thanks. Wait a sec. This isn't a kidney. Huh? This is a chop house sirloin, cut in the shape of a kidney. Oh, shit. Oh my god, Brenda, did you see the new Lifetime movie? I can't believe they casted what's her face in it. Have you seen the new Mac palette? What's the patient's blood type? AB negative. I may be negative. Take my kidney. Who are you? Well, I'm you. How are you me if I'm laying here and I give you my kidney? Well, to be honest, you've been working on this video for two weeks nonstop, and you're exhausted, so, uh, wake up. I fell asleep eating kidney beans? You call this a plot twist? This isn't a kidney. This is a chop house sirloin cut in the shape of a kidney.